Good morning. I don't know about you, but I love sports. And it's been hard not being able to follow sports and play sports. But through it all, it's led me to think about what's the greatest victory of all time. And as I've thought about it, I've recognized it's not the Cubs winning the World Series or Michael Phelps winning eight gold medals in a single Olympics or even the famous David versus Goliath victory. It's Jesus, death and resurrection. That's the greatest victory of all time whenever he defeats the enemy and death. And it's incredible because of that, we can read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 confidently. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of the sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus has given us victory through what he did. And I don't know if it's the coach in me or what, but I love to go, what sets up the victory? And as I was reading through the Gospels, I was struck by something really interesting because what happens before Jesus' ultimate sacrifice, what he does before that is probably pretty important to him and gives us a glimpse in how we should live. And what I found was intriguing is Matthew, Mark, and Luke each spend about a chapter talking about the last night with Jesus' disciples and what he says to them and what he does with them before he's falsely arrested. But John, he spends five chapters looking at this final night. And in, in some ways, it's like a pregame huddle, right? Jesus is about to go on and win the ultimate victory. And he's telling the disciples what's most important. And I challenge you to read John 13 through 17 on your own. But I want to skip to the final chapter because it's Jesus' longest recorded prayer. It's what's on his heart. It's what he wants those that are following him to get. And he spends the first 19 verses praying for the disciples, praying that they'll get it, praying that they will have eternal life. He prays that they're going to be protected and that they'll be in the world, but not of the world. But then in a moment, in verse 20, there's a shift in the prayer. And Jesus prays for us, for you and for me. And I want to read this portion of the prayer because it's so powerful. In John 17, 20 through 23, it says, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. You see, Jesus' prayer is that we will be one. And the reality is, is that true unity is only possible through Jesus Christ. And one of the incredible things that I discover as I read this, one of the purposes of unity is twice in verse 21 and 23, we see that Jesus says that they will be one so that the world will know that you have sent me. There's purpose in unity. And it's so powerful because right now, more than ever, the world needs hope in Jesus Christ. And unity helps bring that. And so... Jesus has called us to be united, and I want us to begin to think about what does it look like for you in this moment to be united? Maybe it means that you need to make things right with God. Maybe it means you need to be more part of your church community, whatever that looks like. Or, or maybe it means you need to call up a friend and make things right with them. Or maybe you need to contact someone and, and call them and just hear their story and encourage them. I don't know what it looks like for you in this moment to live into the unity that Christ calls us to but I challenge you to think about it. Romans 12, 18 says, live at peace with everyone as far as it depends on you. What is Christ calling you to do to live in unity?